Good evening, everyone. I'm very aware that the bar has been open for about three and a half hours, and also that we're getting results in about an hour's time, so I'm very much the interim act. I'm going to talk about two things tonight, polling and politics, which is just an excuse to do what we all really want to do, which is predictions. So without further ado, let's get up on this screen what we think will actually happen. YouGov is projecting a very clear win for Hillary Clinton tonight. The reasons for that are so simple. Women vote and Hispanics are voting. Now, Donald Trump's path to the presidency always rested upon the proposition that he could turn out voters who don't normally vote in elections. And people who backed Donald Trump thought that this would be the white working class voters, the kind of voters who led Brexit in Britain. But what has actually happened, according to all of YouGov's data, and indeed according to a lot of the early vote data that we've already seen, is that Donald Trump's candidacy has instead activated in large numbers women and Hispanics, especially women and Hispanics who haven't previously voted. If we think about Florida for just a moment, we realize that there has been 100% more Hispanics voting in the early vote period in this election than voted four years ago in the same period. That is an extraordinary advantage for Secretary Clinton and a dramatic disadvantage for Donald Trump. But the data that supports the idea of a Clinton win and create such a very, very difficult path for Mr. Trump doesn't just end there. Because when we begin to dig into the data even deeper, we see the problems that Mr. Trump may face. What we can do with profiles, the YouGov tool which allows us to understand voters based in this election on 4,000 surveys every single day, plus huge amounts of demographic and socioeconomic data is get a really good picture of what people think and why they think it. So these are sort of typical views of some of Trump's core voters. And you see in this views that are no longer held by crucial swing voters in crucial battleground states. And that's a big problem for Mr. Trump to overcome. But moving on from that, we see where people get their news. And when you get your news from Fox News to that extent, you are becoming a hyper-partisan who is seriously detached from reality. And the problem with that is you are not representing the kind of Reagan Democrat, the kind of Bush Republican who delivered the White House for the Republican Party in those elections. It's really important to understand how far from the mainstream of regular voters Donald Trump's Tea Party alt-right conservatism has taken things. In contrast, Hillary Clinton has run a pretty normal, pretty standard, pretty centrist Democratic Party position. But she's done it at a time in which there are more women as a share of the electorate, there are more ethnic minorities as a share of the electorate. There are more college-educated voters as a share of the electorate. And all of these groups are hugely beneficial to the Democrats and hugely disadvantageous to Donald Trump's candidacy in the first place. So let's conclude by just looking at the map again. And the states in gray are the states that we consider to be still toss-ups. It is really important to remember as we look at the coverage tonight that the candidate who usually wins elections in America is the candidate who has the most paths to 270. And Hillary Clinton has so many different routes to 270 tonight. There's the Western strategy by which she can win Nevada, Colorado, New Mexico, even potentially Arizona in some scenarios. There is the Rust Belt scenario in which she holds on to Ohio Unlikely tonight, but not as make or break as it used to be. And then there's the Sun Belt states, the importance of the New South, states like North Carolina and Florida, where our model and our polling shows that she has significant advantages. In contrast, Donald Trump needs to run the table. 
He needs to win almost every single battleground state there is, almost every single toss-up state there is, and then at the same time, he needs to reach deep into democratic territory, into states like Pennsylvania and Michigan, states that have not voted for a Republican since George H.W. Bush beat Michael Dukakis in 1988, and he needs to win one of those as well. So I know the media, with all due respect to our friends, has had a lot of fun saying that this is going to be a very close election. And I even know that the ambassador earlier said that it could be a very late night indeed. But if our polling is right, then we can expect a result within a few hours and well ahead of 6 a.m. And if our polling is wrong, well then I've stood up on stage enough for tonight for you to know my face and for you to be able to throw the donuts at me later. And with that, I think I'll leave it. Have a very good evening.